Lockdown is real. Lockdown is real. Cell fights in prison, bad energy in the cell, lockdown. This is something people are experiencing at a high level right now. DVs are up during this coronavirus. Violence in the own household is up. Drama's up. Divorces are up. I get it, but there's a way to defeat this. You have to make sure that your subconscious thoughts and your energy is in alignment with the outcome you desire. It's got to be in alignment. A lot of people think that just because their actions aren't, their actions are just and they're not acting out of character, that their subconscious thoughts and energy aren't poisoning those around them, causing events to take place that make them place blame on the other person. You can control the other person basically Jedi style by making sure your subconscious is affirming to them, making sure your subconscious is building them, making sure you're not driving them to act out against you. A lot of people don't know how to inwardly reflect, so they outwardly project. This is real. If they don't know why they're feeling uncomfortable because of your subconscious thoughts that are negative against them, then they act out against you. Now you sit there and you call the event something negative that they did to you, but in all reality, you drew that in. You drew it in and I used to do it all the time in a cell in a positive and negative way. When you get, when you're on lockdown, when you're living a life like I've had in the cell with another individual that you don't care for, you have to try everything to not get in this drama. I had a big old skinhead celly one time named Mike. He was an independent skin, wasn't even part of some gang. And I don't get along with that shit. It was never my thing. I never understood racism. But guess what? Wake the fuck up. The penitentiary is full of it. I've told this fight before. Over some peanut butter. Over some peanut butter, me and Mike get into it. I told him, you ain't getting shit, homie. I already bought you some soups. That peanut butter's mine. Have your soup. He wanted some of my peanut butter. Now here we are just fully fighting. I sock him in his face. He's choking me. I'm in the vent talking shit to my neighbor, my neighbor from uh, from Cap Town, Oceanside. And I'm like, hey, big dog, fucking Mike's got his titties on my neck. When I get out of this hold, I'm going to beat this fat motherfucker's ass. My neighbor was sitting there going, oh, damn, Wes, what's going on over there? I'm real vocal in the vent to my neighbors. When you're on lockdown, you're in a vent. You're in a vent talking to your neighbors. So you're in a vent. You say, excuse me, in a vent. And then you call over to your neighbor, and this was the homie from uh, from Cap Town in Oceanside, an old school cat that I would always talk to. So then we're, we're sitting here conversing back and forth every day, and then one day, he hears a scuffle going on in the cell, and I never felt good about fights. Whenever I won or lost, I never felt good. You have to realize this. What is a fight? What is a fight? This is someone at the moment that you supposedly don't even have respect for that you're mad at, that you don't like, and here you are seeking validation from that individual. You're seeking validation from them. You wanna beat their ass so that they know you're superior. It's just fucking faulty from the gate. Everything like this. I don't even engage in any sort of debate or argument on social media because I believe you either agree with the person or you keep it pushing. If you have time to sit there and debate or argue with something so on posts or anything like that, you're a fucking stupid motherfucker. Literally, there's no point for that. There's no point. What do you get from it? You can debate that in your head all day, but I don't do it. I don't do it. I sit there. I can learn from afar. If someone makes a good point or they don't, they don't make a good point. I keep it pushing. If they make a good point, I say, oh, I love it. You, you got that. That's gold. That's all that it takes. Nothing else. Anybody who wants to argue is just further solidifying that negative character of they want to argue. They want validation. Anyone arguing with you is seeking validation from you. So in these small quarters, me and my wife, we're accountable at the height. We're accountable to our energy towards each other during a lockdown. So if one of us starts dropping our rate of vibration, our energy starts dropping. We come up to the other individual. We're like, Hey, my bad. I know you can feel, I know you can feel that I have strong ass energy. And my wife feels it very bad. I go up and admit it right away before it turns into subconscious negative thoughts. When we sit there and think and poison our future with the people we're closest with, a lot of people do that in their work environment, at home, 
They poison the future they have with this individual by sitting there thinking negatively about them hours of each day. And then they construct this person into something they're not. Literally, this is the most flawed shit we can do. We need to use our mind to benefit us. I would always see it happen in the penitentiary with people who just didn't mesh well. And in all reality, you can get your outcome by just finding something positive in this person, building them somehow or using them as the test. The universe is calling you for your level up. So they're putting these people in your path. Your path is to recognize their energy before you even get there and know what they're about that they're about to say or do something stupid and how you're gonna react. So how you're gonna react is one of two ways when you come across somebody who doesn't match your energy. The first way is when you start to evolve, you'll be like, hey, I'm just gonna avoid this person. But when you've made it really far, when you know your triggers, when you know what's coming, you use that person for your next level. Your next level is that you are going to flip that person. They're going through something. They're going through some pain or they wouldn't be acting like that. Let them speak to you. Talk to them. Let them open up. And then flip them. Show them. You can't tell them and yell at them. You got to let them embrace and share with you what they're going through. And then flip them to a positive mindset by, by letting them show their fault. Letting them show their pain. In all reality, all states, all internal states... People who don't cure themselves with internal reflection, they hurt others with outward projection. And that's what's going on when people act like this. If you just know that simple quote, internal, if you don't learn to internally reflect, then you will outwardly project. And this goes for all negative states, all negative states. And it goes for all positive ones too. If you internally reflect to make yourself feel so great inside, through these acts of these steps of life that increase your rate of vibration, your exercise, your diet, the reading, the positive affirmations, getting rid of negative self-talk, then what you can do is project onto people positivity and energy and just give them all your hope and everything good. You can choose to make your mark on people before you ever even speak to them. It will be your energy that you've been cultivating within. That's how these videos work. I have been stacking wins all day. So I come in and I inject everybody listening to this with the ability to go stack wins. You can't fake that. You are who you are that day. Your energy created that day is what people are feeling from you. And when you've created negative energy habitually over the years and years and years, then it's more likely that you're gonna project that onto somebody else. I had a guy one time when I was still doing dope in prison. I literally had a guy go get me some Thorazine from one of these dudes that are on meds. And we were sitting there in a cell on a massive lockdown. And I'm like, dude, go get me any fucking meds you can get. And me and my, Thorazine burns like a motherfucker. Thorazine is literally, it tastes like black licorice or something. And people, people, call, it, people call it like the Thorazine shuffle or something. They, Cause people who take Thorazine are literally like zombies. So we're like, go get us one. We've been on lockdown forever. Fuck this. Like, just want to be numb right now. So the guy goes and gets him. He doesn't come back for four fucking days. He's a SDSH member, a local one. Don't even want to say the name. Don't even care to fucking bring it up. Motherfuckers know him. The dude was paroling in four days. But since he didn't go get the Thorazine that I asked him, I'm like, motherfucker, when they let me off this lockdown, we're going to have some words. And he's like, hey, homeboy. We could sell it up and stab it out right now because at this yard, at this time, there was no fighting. There was a no hands policy at this yard and this fool knew it. So we were about to have to get him up. I was just saying, we're going to have some fucking words. I got to talk to you when we come out and he pushed the line. So now that he threatened me, me and him are going to have to stab it out. That's literally how bad it is on some of these four yards. There was a no hands policy on this yard. When you hear other people talk about yards and times and this and that, different places have different fucking rules, different politics, because at this time we were low on white boys and we don't want to lose them to a fist fight. You get a fist fight, both you guys are going to the hole and we don't want to lose our people. So guess what? If it's really that serious, you better get that piece, book that motherfucker if it's that serious. That's actually a good way of looking at life out here. Are you going to argue with that dude? Are you going to even get in that, get into that with that person? 
Because literally, if you are, you better be willing to stab them. And this was a new yard that I had been on. And as I, I haven't even come out. I'm sitting there on lockdown as I rolled up. And this fool, I'm like, okay, well then it's fucking on. Because now I've learned the rules. I know this is a place like this. And I'm scared shitless. I'm like, fuck. Me and this dude are going to have to kill each other in the fucking cell. Over me getting heated over some fucking stupid ass pills that I shouldn't even have been getting. So then I'm just sitting there for days tripping on it. If you say that you ain't tripping when some other dude who's all blasted who done mad time is telling you we're going to sell it up and stab it out and you know the politics on that yard or that, you're a fucking liar. So I'm sitting there going through it. The karmic debt that I'm paying for being a dumb motherfucking dope fiend at that time. And he finally comes back with the pills and he's still pissed about it. I don't know he's paroling in three days before the lockdown's coming up. So he just knows he's blowing hot air, but he's blowing hot air at me very well. And I'm shook, I'm shook. I don't wanna get into this. I don't, but it's too fucking late and I'm starting to commit myself mentally. And I'm just like, fuck, I gotta stop living like this. Me and my celly crush up this Thorazine pill and sniff it and it burns you more than anything you've ever burnt. It just fucking lit my whole head up worse than speed or met anything coke anything and I just I just sat there and I'm like what the fuck am I still doing this for so many different ways that we're just putting getting in the way of our progression people out here are still doing it you don't make right choices when you're fucking high people even try to debate fucking weed like you're you're slow on weed I don't give a fuck when you think you're not I heard an analogy the other day I'm driving set we're both driving at 75 you get high Guarantee you start slowing down to 65 and I'm speeding up. I'm about to go 100. This is what it comes down to. Don't get rid of all vices. Get the clarity in line. Make sure your subconscious is getting you where you need to go. Whether it's employees, family members, anyone you're around on this lockdown. Make sure your subconscious is creating where you want to be. The future you desire. Because the actions are going to ensue. Thoughts create things. If you continually fucking think this way about your partner on a lockdown, you guys aren't gonna make it. Me and my wife have almost not made it through this lockdown. That's being honest. And that's painful as fuck because she's my fucking life. And I don't wanna see any of you guys go through this. So please take my advice and make sure that you're 100% truthful with what you want. Because we all know, I've said it before, the biggest problems human cause themselves is to try to convince their mind of something their heart knows is a lie. If you guys get in an argument today, this week, this month, please skip to the end result and just think what you want. If you wanna still be together, then act that way. And if you want them in your life for your future, then think that way. And if you want them in your life for life, then possess the energy of drawing that person in and showing them how loved they are. I want this for you guys. Don't let this lockdown get you into some shit. End you in the pen, end your marriage, all this shit. We're in control. Let's fucking get it.